next one, let's bring out the blue corner, Luis De Franca. And there you see him, Luis De Franca, comes in with a perfect 2-0 record fighting out of Juan fight team. That's, of course, is Vanderlei Silva right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Luis De Franca, 23 years old. That's about all we know about him, Frank Trigg. He wasn't really <laughs> interested in doing interviews. He really wasn't interested in telling us much about himself. He didn't want to talk about his family or his dog or what he does at knitting class or, or none of that. He just he said, hey, I weighed in. I'm going to fight. What else do you need to know? Well, it, it almost made me feel like that he's one of the Dominican pitchers that was playing underneath the wrong name and he's trying to hide from extradition or something. I'm like, it's it's a fight. Like, we can't talk about you on TV if you don't give us anything. All we're going to do now is talk about his opponent, and that's kind of what he did to us. Well, Luis DeFranca could be 37 years old. He may be the jungle fight champion. He could be a Chuto Brazil title holder. We think he's sandbagging. <laughs> he, said, he says he's 2-0 as an amateur, but uh, we don't know. I think he came out here, and I think he's 27. I think he's 27 or 4 as a pro. <laughs> he's in it all down with uh, Vlad Ishmael down there in, uh, in Jungle Fight. And it's, uh, it's one of those situations where we're just going to have to find out when he walks out of this fight in 33 seconds. Well, i tell you what, Luis DeFranca, you know, he looks focused. Obviously, anybody that's fighting under one fight team, we talked about it earlier in the night. Those guys bang in practice all day, every day. They're berserkers. They're aggressors. Uh, I know they have that high-intensity, high-altitude room that they use in that gym over there. And, and uh, you know, these guys just work. You know, if nothing less, that a guy from one fight team is going to come in. He's going to be fit, and he's going to be aggressive. You know, and a lot of times, too, with the one fight team, that for, they are so technically sound, you kind of forget, because there's a point in the fight where they see the exhaustion happening on their opponent's face, and they throw all caution to the wind and just open it up and go nuts. Can leave openings, but also makes it exciting for the fans, and that uh, one fight team delivers. I mean, you, look, you know, it's amazing. You talk about their fearless leader, Vanderlei Silva. Hasn't had the most wins lately, you know, as he's went, gone through a rough stretch in his career. But I tell you what, his last fight against Kung Lee in San Jose, you're talking about Kung Lee's backyard, and yet the arena was going absolutely crazy for Vandalay Silva because this guy is an MMA legend. Uh, it, it was just an incredible moment to see, Frank, to see Kung Lee's hometown crowd kind of turn on him because Vandalay Silva is just that much of, of an MMA legend. I'm going to give you a little information, John Morgan. Um Guys that are have been in the sport for a long time and are still fighting, we don't like to be called legends because that means we're being <laughs> called old. All right, let's meet Louis DeFranca's opponent, who we know a little more about. Let's bring out the red corner, Milan Zerzal. Now, Frank, I know a little bit more about Milan Zerzal, not just because he actually was willing to do the interview with us, but also because I had an opportunity to see him fight several times here under the Tough Enough banner. He is a three-time Tough Enough vet. He is 2-1. He's only been training for a year, but this is the thing I love about Milan Zerzal. He's been training for one year. He debuted one year ago. So he didn't come to the gym and say, hey, you know, let me get six months. Let me get a year. Let me get really seasoned. He just said, I'm here. I'm in. Let's schedule something. I like that style. I like that aggressive behavior. There is some caution to, to that style that you would normally tell, but as a coach trainer, in my mind, I'm like, no, that's the guy I want. I want to have to hold him back as opposed to trying to push him out there to get him to do something. And right now there's a lot of guys that train all the time and train as hard if not harder than the most of us but don't ever want to fight, which is great for practice partners, but you want to see these guys go out there and progress, and, and that obviously that's what he wanted to do. We're going to take a look here at the tail of tape. Obviously 4-1 and one there for Milan Zerzal against the undefeated 2-0 record of Luis DeFranca. The weight the same, of course, at 170. Milan Zerzal a little bit taller at 5'10". Something interesting to note. Milan Zerzal wants to turn pro, he wants to fight in the UFC, but he wants to do it at 145 pounds. So as a 170 pound fighter, as an amateur, at 5 foot 10 inches tall, he knows that eventually he wants to work his body down to that 145 pound mark. I find that very interesting. I, I like the foresight. I like, you know, I, I don't know what that means as far as what your body is now and what it'll be in the future, but uh, you know, I like the idea. I mean, guys are dropping weight classes. Well, the, the cool thing is you're walking in, you're hoping that he weighs 170. That's why he's fighting 170 as an amateur. So he could really be at 155. But if you look at his body, he really doesn't have that much weight to cut. It's going to be a long, hard draw to get down to 145. All right, let's get the official introductions. I think this one's going to be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next fight of the evening in the welterweight division. Introducing first in the blue corner, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds, 
with two wins and no losses, fighting out of one fight team, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here is Luis Pompas de Franca. His opponent standing in the red corner, weighing in at 170 pounds with four wins and one loss. Fighting out of Extreme Couture, Las Vegas, Nevada, he is Milan Zerzal. Ref in charge of the action, Chris Tyone. Okay, guys, we've gone over the rules. We expect you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Questions? No. Questions? Here we go. Good luck. So Luis DeFranca, the mystery man, could be a 45-year-old shooto champion. We don't know. He's in the white trunks. <laughs> Milan Zerzal, the 170-pound fighter out of Extreme Couture that wants to drop down to 145 at some point. Both these guys. Look at the slam from Franca there. Wow. Uh. We said he'd be aggressive. We didn't know he'd be that aggressive. Incredible body lock in the mount. Well, half mount there. Nice position. Hips are nice and tight. He's got the shoulder pressed in for the full pass. He's got legit jiu-jitsu skills. This is legit. Not, not, I started six months ago, jiu-jitsu skill. He's a ringer. I'm telling you, he's a ringer. <laughs> of course, no the guy in the bottom, Milan's from. Yeah, no wonder he didn't want to talk about it to us about his career, man. It, no, excellent work from Luis DeFranco. He just pounded his hand on the mat. But look at Milan's jaw now. Working his right leg up high on the back, was able to regain full guard and working the legs high. Good position change, Milan. He's, he's really getting through there. And Luis is doing a great job of staying on him and staying tight. Zerjal worked to a knee there, and obviously Franca delivered a nice knee to the chest. Clenching against the cage. Milan's in a good position. He's got to get those hands lower, though. They're too high up around the body. Luis is doing a great job of keeping his arms high. Now, Franca dropped down there. Was he trying to pull guard, or what was no, he, he was doing? He's trying to peek out. He's trying to go to a, a fireman's carry or a high crotch, but he got caught. Good position. He's got some. He's got legit wrestling takedown. Chris Tyone in a bad position. <laughs> he had to get out of the way as they scrambled. High intensity early. Uh, obviously, the clinch game, you know, to the untrained eye, not necessarily the most exciting, but a lot of strategy going on when these two are locked up against the cage. Yeah, the guy with the under. Whoa, nice from Plata. Gets reversed. He doesn't land it. Zerjal nearly snuck around to the back, and now he's uh, uh, on his butt. And DeFranco has finally got in. this position, got the space, and. and you see him now on top, and you see immediately how he's starting to push in. He's starting to drive with his head and his arms. He's going to get this control back again. Final 10 seconds of the opening round. It's been an impressive performance by Luis Franca. Milan Zerjal, as we said before, a gritty fighter, has hung in there and countered back. Fun first round. Obviously a clear opening round for Luis Franca. Yep. Great aggression early. Slammed his right hand on the mat and just rushed forward. But I give a lot of credit to Milan Zerjal for kind of stopping that early momentum. Yeah, nothing really happened after that. I mean, it was it was a lot of action. Obviously, Luis DeFranco won the round, but there really wasn't that much action after the after the initial hand slap, run in, and big takedown. After that, it was just more of a normal fight, and there was no domination. Simply because Milan is very patient, he's very he's very tenacious in here. He understands the different positions they need to be in. And he doesn't panic very easily. Let's watch the replay. That's where Zerjal was nearly able to take the back, which would have been a great moment for him. Instead. Luis DeFranca did a great job of staying out of that. DeFranca still looks intense over there in his corner. I'm telling you, he's got the legs up, he's resting. It just looks like a killer. He's a prospect in my eyes. Yeah, he really is. He's got legit takedown, legit takedown defense. And he just looks mean. I'm not, the Bieber haircut maybe needs to go a little bit, but the wow. eyes. <laughs> he pulled Bieber. <laughs> All right, again, it's Luis DeFranca in the white trunks, Milan Zerjal in the red. We've got DeFranca taping the opening round pretty clearly. Zerjal with a head kick that kind of flashes off the temple, but Luis DeFranca unfazed, pushes in again. Mm, he's got he's got judo takedowns. Those aren't wrestling. Those, he's got legit judo takedowns. That was impressive because it looked like Zerjal was looking for some yeah. kind of a trip, and instead it was Luis DeFranca who was able to wind up in top position. Franca in half mount. He's got, got his body kind of tied up against the cage, so he doesn't have a lot of room to work with. He does somehow get out the side mount anyway, but that's as Zerzal tries to work to his feet. So Zerzal doing a good job of keeping his back to the cage and not allowing DeFranca to get there. 
He's looking for a big sweep. He's looking for a big throw here. Well, I like the technique from Zerjal there, turning in, though, using the cage to peel him off. Still nice not creating work. a lot of space for himself. Yeah, nice work. He's back on top. Well, in, in back in control. But he's, now he's going to get himself back on top because so far, you know, the, the first round he got beat up in pretty good. Second round, he's got to show control and try to win these judges over. So Jal now punching away from the outside, which is really the most action we've seen thus far in the round. Good position. Always landed flush. Got through the hands every time. Obviously not that much damage. Really didn't force Defunga to do anything different. He just sat there and took it. Nice knee inside from Zajal on the outside. He's controlling the center of the octagon right now. Oops, I got him to get sued. Cage. Center of the cage. Cage. <laughs> no matter what you heard at home. John Morgan from <laughs> MMA Junkie said cage. And if you heard anything else, it definitely wasn't Frank Trigg. Final 10 seconds of the round. No more trademark uh, terms being used the rest of the broadcast, I assure you. Lots of right hands here. DeFranca looks for a late takedown. Good action there in the end for Jean. Now, Frank Trigg, let's talk about this. Luis DeFranca had the nice takedown, wound up in top position. Didn't do a whole lot with the position, but was on top. We get back to the feet. Merlon Zerjal works the outside, works in those short right hands. Obviously, he didn't hurt any, but he was still working the punches. Who takes this round? You know what? You've got to give it to Luis DeFranca because the judging from the first fight shows you that's how the judges go tonight. That even though that we had that second round, it was kind of a switch. We weren't really sure it was going to go. And they both went against us, you know, in the, in the Loftus Carboni fight. And really, that's how they're going to go again. You know, we saw the action. We saw the big takedown, even though he did get hit 75 times or 35 <laughs> times at least in, that, in this position, nothing re else really happened. He ended up with a takedown, he ended up in more control, had more damage, so they're going to give it to him for that round. So there you go, Luis DeFranca, perhaps two rounds up, perhaps it's one to ones where Jal did his best. Let's see what these guys have left in the third and final round of what's been an exciting contest thus far. Technical battle in the grappling exchange, but a, a lot of fun. The takedowns have been really exciting to watch. Luis DeFranca in the white trunks, Milan Zerjal in the red. Inside leg kick for Zerjal. Luis DeFranca answers right back. High kick. Made a nice sound, but it was blocked. So Zerjal pressing in. Gets a nice right hand, but DeFranca right there to answer back. Good work from both fighters. So both these fighters are content to push the other guy against the cage. Both guys have an opportunity in the open space to take the guy down, but neither one of them shot. They just kind of did it. They want to do everything against the cage. And here come these short right hands again. Although there's, the, like you said, the trips, the judo takedowns. Now, Milan Zerchal has the neck wrapped. I don't think he's going to be able to get anything from there. Does let it go. Looks for the takedown. Knees inside. Zerchal remaining very, very busy. Chris Tyone calling a timeout. A little more than a minute left. Chris Tyone, a warning for grabbing the fence. Said, I warned you two times, Mr. Dajal. Do it again. You're going to lose a point. We restart the fight in the center of the ring. Oh. Cage, octagon, hexagon. Septagon. Oh, this big right hand from DeFranca. These guys are wailing uh. in the pocket. Look at this action, Frank Trigg. Wow. Great position. Both guys throwing caution to the wind. Unfortunately, Luis DeFranca got the betterment of that whole piece. He is against the cage at this point, but he actually won that exchange. Another takedown. This time, Zerjal on top. Lands a few big punches from top position. Wailing away at the right hands. Most of them grazing off, but that left was big. Hammer fist. I told you, Merlon Zerjal, a gritty fighter. High energy to the very end. DeFranca, careful with the right leg on the shoulder. Zerjal going to work to the back. One hook in. A little bit off to the side. He's working to readjust. Look at the control of the right leg there by DeFranca. That was genius. Good position. Grabbing that heel as it comes through. Controls so he can get the other hook in. Now he's in a position seconds. to get back to his feet if he chooses. So Jaw's going to look for another late takedown. Staying on the back. And how about that? Action packed to the very end. That was a lot of fun, Frank Trey. Round three again. Zerjal landed those short punches early on. He also had some takedowns, got the back control. DeFranco was the one I thought that was landing the power shots. He's certainly the yeah. one that was landing the cleaner punches. So, again, you can make a case for either guy, right? What to go off of at this point is the exchange rate that happened and who, who ended up the fight. I see this fight going two rounds to one, 
to Luis de Franca because I think Milan Jujal won the third round just by being more active and having more pressure and ending up the end of the round on top and in control. He does a great job of passing the guard right here, gets all the way around, and then starts throwing hooks and unfortunately doesn't get that right, that left leg, excuse me, that right leg hook all the way through because it gets caught, but I think he ends up winning the round. Yeah, I agree with you, Frank Trigg. I think Milan Zuchal has to take the third round. Luis DeFranca clearly took the first round. So it all comes down to round two, I think, in most people's mind. Uh, you know, you said you thought Luis DeFranca took it. I, I, I tend to agree with you, although I think Milan Zuchal with those short little rabbit punches may have uh, won some judges' eyes. We'll find out now. It's a close one. This one could go either way. Let's take it up to Justin Bernard for the result. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we have your winner by unanimous decision. The red corner, Milan Zerzhal. There you have it. And a little bit of a surprise there, but, you know, again, that second round was extremely close. Milan Zerzhal weathered the early storm from Luis DeFranca, who looked amazing in the opening round. Zerzhal fought back hard in the second. We thought he all took the third. It just came down to round two, but another great performance by Milan Zerzhal, who I think is, is one of the most exciting fighters under the Tough Enough banner right now. He moves to 5-1. Luis DeFranca just needs to learn to finish fights a little bit stronger, and he'll still be a prospect at 170. He drops to 2-1. and one. We're going to have a quick intermission, folks, but please stay tuned. When we come back, we'll have more action from the South Point Arena in Las Vegas, including not Ladies one, not two, but three championship fights. You're watching Tough Enough, the future stars of mixed martial arts.